Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Brokerpreneur Podcast. I am Dr. Ben Spears, the ambassador of Flow. Your 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 chess your chess coach for for the for the afternoon is the big guy himself. <laughs> Matt, Matt Vi. How's it going, Matt? I'm doing fantastic. I'm not the chess coach. You're the chess coach. Dude, whatever. You've seen me play chess, man. <laughs> no, I ain't no coach. I'm I'm the paddle one. <laughs> I still got my braid. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Matt. Yeah, Ben. We got a really cool thing. You know, we do. you know, you love chess. You know I love chess, that yeah. kind of thing. So, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna bring this uh, why, why are we going to bring this around? Right. It's the end of the year. It's the end of 2021. Right. But we're going to bring it around for a certain reason. Why are we bring it around, baby? Tell them. Lay so it on. Be part of your, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wherever you're watching this. <clears throat> right. uh, yeah. Well, yeah. We're bringing it around because, gosh, you know, the, the year has some different parts to it. A chess game has a different part to it. And we want to make sure that, uh, you know, you're looking at 2022. Um, in, in the same frame that you would strategically plan out, you know, your attack when it comes to, um, you know, you, you, you know, facing an opponent in chess. Mm -hmm. Let's just hope you start out with white pieces. So you get to go first? Yes, because you get to go first. Right. Right. Statistically, um, you, you're going to win more. Right. That's <laughs> so, right. Um, so, Matt. Yep. Well, us. the chess championships are going on now, too, right? Yeah, uh, you're, the, you're watching yeah, those. You're actually... chess champ I'm trying to watch them, Matt. Yeah. Right, but you know, they, but you got podcasts to do, right? They're in Dubai. They're in Dubai, uh -huh. which means that uh, you know we're we're in Eastern time zone, right? Which means it starts. They start playing at seven a.m. Right. I'm up. It's not like oh, you know, it's just so early. It feels like two a.m. Right. But man, I'm I'm getting around. I'm taking kids to school. Yeah, you got stuff right? to I'm do. I'm going man. to work. That's like that's like gets that's like GSD time. Right. Right. So I can't be, uh, you know, sitting there watching these two guys. Take twenty minutes to move one piece, <laughs> one piece, and then end up in a draw and not get anything done all day. Well, they're out of out of fourteen matches, and you you've done a great job of keeping up with this. I, I haven't kept up with this, but out of fourteen matches, they yeah. played five and a yeah, draw they, and they five. Of five, them. two and a half, two and a half. Yeah. It's the first one to seven and a half points because obviously it's fourteen matches. Right. And uh, I have to imagine by the by the by the looks of it, it's going to go to like a tiebreaker. I don't know how that. I don't you get know a point how. for a tie. Um, for a tie, yeah, you get half point. Half a point. Yeah, you split a point. Right, so they're both at three points now. Well, they're both at, well, only well, five almost. games. Two yeah. and a half, two and a half. Okay. okay. Yeah. Tomorrow's game six, and they'll both be at three points. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Matt with the math again. Yeah. I think it's been every podcast lately that we've done that I've screwed up some math, right? Well, listen, you're the, you're the recruiting genius. I'm the one that just has to bring in the uh, the, 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 the calculator. In the calculator. Yep, I got so, you. So, guys, wherever you're listening to this. Imagine that, a, a, a doctor good at math. Yeah, go figure, right? Right. Please hit that follow and subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely love you guys being part of our community, and we want to be part of yours. Uh, it's no better time than the present than to go to brokerpreneurpodcast.com. If you don't know how to spell it, look down at your phone when you're listening to it, and sign up for our weekly newsletter. It's uh, absolutely jam-packed full of really cool things as far as not just recruiting, but some of the events that we have coming up that yep. um, are absolutely free for you guys to join. Um, so, some cool downloads. I throw those in there every now and then. Some really cool articles that you can use not only to have really good and, and just kind of fun conversations with um, you know the agents in your brokerage that you have right now, but also some of the recruits that you're calling so that you're not just calling and saying, hey, you know, would you like me, me to tell you yeah. all the things that I could do to help help your business grow? Right. <laughs> right. And so uh, sign up for that. You get it every single week, every single Friday. It's absolutely um, a blast for, for us to put, to get, put together. And, uh, and, and, you know, we throw in some, throw in some fun things every now and then it's, or not every now and then every time as well. Um, I can't wait for Christmas. I'm going to throw in, I got to find something to do with like the ugliest you didn't Christmas. Ask me how I was doing today. I've asked you twice. This is the third recording. <laughs> 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 well, so I'm excited. Uh, yeah. it's, it's the holidays, right? You mean, How can you not love how this How you time doing, of, Matt? Oh, thanks, man. How can you not <laughs> love this time of year? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely the best. It's so fantastic. You get to hang out with family. 
You get yeah. the, I mean, you get, I mean, just great food and, and just so many things to be thankful for. So anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to take us back to the beginning. We're not going to go through all that again. Or I think we no, lose the no, audience. No, no, We lose the Matt, audience. Matt, we have a retreat. You know, we're doing like a little, guys, just a little bit of insight on our business. We got this like little retreat that we're doing this week where we're planning out, you know, a lot of things, a lot of cool things that we're doing right. um, for our business and, and whatever. And uh, in the podcast, you know, we, is Tammy going to like, you know, put a tree up? At the resu- no, <laughs> no, she won't. But she'll decorate somehow. There'll yeah, be she, something. Yeah, there'll be something, right? Yeah, yeah you'll know it's holiday. Some some chili cupcakes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Matt. Yes, Benny. Every chess game has an opening, a middle game, and an end game. Right. Right. <clears throat> We're, let's let's talk through that just like just like it's our our plan for for twenty twenty two. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to recruiting, or even if you want to talk about things outside of outside of recruiting. Um, and, and, and throw in some chess terminology as, as you go along, and maybe we can just educate people on this amazing game if they don't play. So yeah, let's talk I, about the opening. Yep. So, so the opening is, uh, is what, what tactic are you going to use in order to put yourself in a good position? Yep. Right? And so the, the biggest thing that the opening does, right, because there's the Sicilian, there's the, what is it, the reverse Sicilian, oh, gosh, there's, there's the, the London There's open, the Spanish, there's a, the French, the Italian, the, yeah, the right. Rui Lopez, yeah. Right, all of that. So, so what that does is that, that allows you to feel confident getting to a certain place in the game, right? Yep. So from a recruiting standpoint, what is it that you're doing starting out in 2022? Mm-hmm. What is it that you're going to do that's going to put you in a comfortable situation? Yeah. What is it that's going to give you that heads up, that that comfortable place to be, right? So does that mean that you're going to hire someone to make your calling, right? Because you don't mm-hmm. like to call. Does that mean that you're going to start using, uh, you know, start using your sales meeting to recruit? Does that mean that you're going to start sending letters out, right? Are you going to start texting people? Are you going to do some of the, this together? Are you going to create a book club? Are you going to, what are you going to do that you're comfortable with that's going to allow you to get started and get going? That's your that's your opening, okay? Yeah. Now notice that there's no mat by opening in chess. Right. Okay. <laughs> so the opening that you choose, you got to be careful with. Yeah. The, the reason why that opening that you choose that the, uh, it is working and why it's labeled and why other people know about it is because it worked and had got the results that you wanted. Yeah, it's proven right? time after time. Proven time after time. So that's why in chess, there's no mat by opening. Yeah. So, so you have to make sure when you're, when you're getting ready to do your recruiting that you're paying close attention to an opening and a plan and something that makes you feel comfortable that you know works. Yeah. Got to start with that. Yeah. Right? And the cool thing is like, you know, most, most chess grandmasters or, you know, any kind of, you know, once you reach any master level, like, like they, they know they sit down at that table. They're like, boom, first, first 15 moves are like done in, right. you know, three minutes, every move after that. Right. Gosh, it's like, man, really painstaking, really thinking about it. Um, you know, making sure, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at everything in the future that could come at you. You're looking at everything in the, in, in, in the present that you're trying to accomplish. And, uh, and, and, and that, and that's where choosing, choosing that opening is so important and, and remembering that it really starts from that. It really, the whole, the whole game, the whole yep. plan starts from, from that, from that foundation. Um, uh, because you know, if you, if you put yourself, if you put yourself down in that portion of the game, then you just don't have a chance. Right you know, from, from that point on and going and going into that, going into that middle game, mm-hmm. um, you know, where, where uh, again, you, you brought it up that the positioning is, is having, having those pieces in place so that now you're essentially just really, you, you can focus on the smaller right. things. That That's when, that's when you're actually making, uh, your, your real decisions. Correct. Right. And so, so the openings are all set up to control the middle of the board. Okay. For yep. the most part. Right. That's, that's what they're doing. So the, the middle game is now how well can you execute controlling the middle of the board, mm-hmm. right? How well can you protect at the same time that you can attack? So from a recruiting standpoint, right, you got to do the same exact thing. Yep. Your mid game has to be what are the things that I'm doing that are working really well? What are the things I'm doing that suck that I need to stop doing those because they're not working anymore? Yep. What are the ones that are help, helping me capture other pieces? That means recruiting other people. And what is it that's keeping me from losing other pieces, which means losing people, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? What's impacting my blundering your age. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, so all of that has to, you have to be paying attention to all of that. You could look at this at a, at a macro level or a micro level, mm-hmm. right? What did I do today that's helping my opening game, my mid game and my end game, right? Mm -hmm. What am I doing this month? What did I do this quarter? What am I doing this year? What am I doing over my three year plan? That's doing that same exact thing. Yeah. So, so you have to look at them in a, in a phase though. You can't say, uh, and let's just go a one year plan. 
you can't treat it all like a middle game. Right. You can't just say, okay, today I'm, you know, I haven't done anything up until now, but today is the day that I'm going to send 50 texts to, to people because that's really what needs to happen. And right. And you yep. send those 50 texts and then tomorrow you go back to doing all the stuff that you're doing. Yeah. Right. Your middle game is when you're, when you're doing that execution, when you're, when you're, when you're grabbing on to other players, when you're positioning yourself, when you're doing those things, not that there's not action in the beginning and the, in the, in the end, but the be- beginning and the end is the, the beginning is what am I going to do? And the end is, which we'll talk about in just a second. So that middle has to support that end. And it had yep. to have been an easy transition from the beginning to get to that point. So you can't just say, okay, I haven't been recruiting all year. I'm going to recruit today and tomorrow. And then I'll go back to doing what I've been doing. Yeah. Okay. You're going to have crappy results if that's what you do. Your mid game has to be something that was built to create. And it has to be something that is building to create circumstances that are going to help you finish. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, you know, one, one of my favorite, favorite parts of, you know, that, that transition from the, you know, from the middle game to the end game is the simplification, mm-hmm. right? So there's, there's, there's 64 squares, there's 30, there's, uh, yeah, 32 36. Squares. Eight, uh, so 16, nine oh, 18. 16, yeah. 16. Yeah. 30, 32, 32 pieces on the table. Look at Matt doing some math. Look at Matt doing that math. <laughs> uh, 32 pieces on the table. And it's, it's, it's hard, right? It gets congested, yeah. right? Absolutely. Especially, especially at the beginning, right? Cause it's like every piece is on there through that middle game, you know, um, a rook's taking a rook or a knight's taking a knight or, you know, you're swapping, you're swapping different pieces and then you end up, then you end up with, you know, a couple key players, you know, hopefully you've got, you know, a couple more pawns than, than your opponent has, mm-hmm. but there's a lot more space on the mm-hmm. board, a lot more room to, 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 to roam and, and move around because the board has been simplified. Hopefully you've made, you know, the right trades um, to where it's relatively even yep. or you have, you know, a little bit, a little bit of an advantage. And then at that point, it's all about refining. Yep. Right. And this is, this is where you're saying like, how can I, how can I close this thing out with a win, Mm -hmm. um, with, with, with what I have, with what I have left, because, you know, I've cut the pieces I didn't need. Right. Right. You know, now I'm at the, or somebody's cut them for me. Yeah. Or cut them, somebody's (laughs) cut them for me. That's exactly right. Now I'm at that point where this is, this is what I have, right? This is, this is my recruiting plan that I'm working with. Um, how, how, how can I make this win, you know, by the end of the game? Hey guys, this podcast is powered by Prospect Boomerang. We all know broker owners struggle with profitability. Prospect Boomerang compounds your profits by recruiting the best agents to your brokerage. For consistent growth, visit prospectboomerang.com. Yeah, how am I positioned now in the middle to be able to help me be in a better position when, it, when that time, when that phase of the game comes up? Yep. And so how you close out matters, right? Yes. Okay. So, so absolutely. I love that you're talking about reviewing what pieces you still have and all that kind of stuff. It's all the things that they've, that they've heard about from a planning perspective. Right. Right. It's the things that we've talked about in the past few podcasts, right? We tried to, you know, take the outliers of planning and kind of try to bring them to light, you know, is what we, is what I, I feel like we did in the past couple of podcasts, uh, you know, how to be actionable and everything. That's, that, that's, that's huge and important. All of those things impact what you're doing now. Yep. And, and that end game in this point is, have you cleared out your prospect tracker, right? If you're clients of ours, have you cleared out your prospect tracker? Have you given up on the ones that you just know aren't going to make that transition? Have you taken a close look at them and said, okay, you know, we've been close with them. We've got letters of intent to hire out to these people. This is going on with these, this is going on with these, these people haven't called back. These people haven't done this. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of giving value to these people and not getting anything in return. Here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm clean. That's that cleaning that you're talking about. That's yep. that, that reduction from complicated and congested to simple. Yes, exactly. And, and as you're doing that, it's allowing you to be able to, it's allowing you to be able to, to, to begin the cycle again, right? Yep. That means that, you know, you're getting rid of the people that it's not going to work with. You're really focusing on some other ones. You're hoping that they transition now, but your plan in uh, at January 1st, not that you're waiting till then, but your plan is, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to rehash this cycle. I'm going to go back. What tactic is going to put me in a good position in the beginning that I'm comfortable with? That's going to help me to my middle game. Yep. And the, and the whole time you're pulling those other people along that are ones that you have a good relationship with. You can't just forget about them. That's the, that's the part that, uh, that's the part that, that, uh, you know, kind of gets me whenever I'm talking to, to some people, you know, the, most of the time when people first start in our, in our coaching and, and training and everything, you know, they have a target list. Yep. Okay. 
and I'll start talking to them about their target list. Within 60 days, that target list is non-existent. Oh, absolutely. Not always. Yeah, but usually. But usually. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and the reason why is because they've, they've, uh, they've given up. Yeah. They don't realize they're in their end game. Yeah. Okay. If you're talking, if you've got 20 people on your target list, right? Cause our prospect tracker, the way our prospect tracker is set up is that there's 10 hot and there's 10 warm and then there's everyone else. Right. Okay. But, but who's shifting through that and how you shift them through that matters. Correct. Okay. So you should always be adding people from the, the cold to the warm. You should always be adding your people from the warm to the hot. Some people in warm are going to fall out. Some people in hot are going to fall out. But you always have to be moving those groups of moving those groups of people. Yep. And so whenever I talk to people and they're like, oh, I've got, my, I've got my hot list and everything, but they're not doing anything to connect with that hot list, all they're doing is collecting names. And, and the issue is they're treating it like they're in their end game, but they're actually in the beginning. Yeah. You follow me? They're still Absolutely. in their opening. They're, they're, there's not consistently. They haven't, <laughs> they haven't built where they are with the person. You yep. know what I'm saying? There's, no, I, I'm not losing you on this, right? 100%. So, I got you. So they're getting confused in what phase of the game that they're, at, that they're in with the person. They feel like they want to be in the end game. Yeah. Because the end game is where, the, where it all happens, right? That's where, yep. the, that's where the fun happens. Yeah. Or the not fun. Right. Or the not fun, right? <laughs> uh, but you get to move on. Yeah. Right. But the but where they're really at is they're still in the opening. Yeah. They they've reached out to the person a couple of times. They sat down with them one time and they had a conversation, and it didn't go exactly right. So they're like, I'm going to keep them on my list, and I'll send something to them or talk to them every now and again. But I'm going to go pay attention to something else now. Yeah. They did not pull them through that cycle. They did not get them from the opening to the middle to the end. Yeah. And they feel like from a time perspective that they should be at the end. But the truth is the end game has nothing to do with time. And that's part of the reason why we came up with this as a chess analogy. Yep. The, 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 you're spending a lot of time going through the motions in the beginning and then you're setting things up in the middle. You don't know how long the end game is going to take. Yep. Some of those games just absolutely take forever, right? Yep. And the reason why is because everybody's thinking through their moves. But when you get that win and you're the grandmaster, grand poobah chess champion of the world, right? You love it because your end game went the way that it was way that it was supposed to go because everything else built on top of it. Your recruiting is the same way. Yep. You have to understand and respect those the beginning and the middle and the end game, and you have to not be confused of which part of that phase, which phase you're in when you're actually going through your recruiting. Now is the time for you to plan that out yeah now is the only chance you're going to be able to take a breath and take a break okay yeah you're exactly right um i don't i don't even i don't even want to touch i don't even want to touch anything after that yeah okay um do you so, have an action item for I us do, i do have an action item absolutely perfect well before we get to that action item guys where have you listened to this i'm gonna do it like in a in a different way if you're listening to this on itunes or spotify that's an fm dj voice stitcher deezer Make sure you hit that follow button. If you happen to be watching us live on the YouTubes. <laughs> it's not live. <laughs> <laughs> Recorded on the YouTubes. Uh, hit that red subscribe button. Hit that bell right beside it. You get notified every time we drop a new episode. You know, it used to be Sexy Real Estate Recruiting Podcast. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to get on. I'm yeah. throwing this throwback. Yeah, that's right. You sound like Johnny Caravella. <laughs> uh, but uh, guys, just, you know, please go to prospectboomerang.com. I don't know who Johnny Caravella is. Dr. Johnny Fever. <laughs> um, and and, and, and check out. in Cincinnati. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I his know you His name is Caravella. Yeah, John, uh, he- John Hess, I think his name was. I know who that is. Yeah, I didn't know that. That was his name. Um, well, make sure you go to Prospect Boomerang, guys. Check out everything that we got going on there. We would absolutely love uh, to be to be part to be part of your brokerage and and and, and show you all the cool things that we can do to help you grow, uh, whether it be recruiting or other things, right, mm-hmm. Matt? Absolutely. So share some share some action items. Help them grow right now, Matt. Help them grow right now. So go watch one of the chess games. So here's the here's the cool thing. I, I've actually got another action item, but I, I just thought I'd throw this out there. So you can go to YouTube, right? And Ben's the one that showed me this. You know, you can watch things on YouTube at an accelerated pace, right? You go to the settings and you can watch it on double speed or whatever it is. So something that normally would take 20 minutes is going to take 10 minutes, right? Right. So go watch and skip through it and watch the chess game and everything. Watch how quickly the beginning of it is. Watch how methodical the middle of it is. Mm-hmm. And then watch how long the end of it is. Okay. Yeah. And how patient they are when they get to the middle and end game. 
right? Yeah. They're just they're in zero rush at all. They're playing how many games in their head whenever they're doing that? Yeah, right? they're calculating thousands of different combinations. Absolutely. And so they look like, you know, uh, Doctor Strange and on uh, on Infinity <laughs> Wars, right? How he was figuring out the 14 million and one or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, all right, so go watch a go watch a chess game, but uh, but uh, or not. Here's what here's what I'd like for you to do though. From what we've talked about, pick a phase of the game that you think you're the best at already. Mm-hmm. Are you good at that planning at that at, at the opening and saying, okay, I really know how to choose this and I'm really good at that? You know what? So one of the one of the people that we we worked with, you know, they uh, uh, one of the people that the, that we work with, they were uh, uh, you know, they were very good at setting things up in an automated way for their recruiting. They executed horribly, right? They were just they struggled. They needed help on the execution. The beginning, that first phase, that that getting started, they were really good at that. So pick one of the phases that you're good at, and that and then one of the phases that you struggle at. Spend the first half of the year doubling down on the one that you're really good at. Are you good at that opening? Are you good at that middle? Are you good at closing and getting people to that win? Are you good at getting them off the fence? If so, spend the first half of the year working on whatever that phase is. Spend the second half of the year working on the phase that you are the worst at. Hmm. Do you do you pick a good plan and then can't execute it and can't get it in place? That's your middle phase, right? You can't get it moving. Are you really good at picking a plan? You're really good at doing the tasks every day, but for some reason people aren't converting? That's the end game, yep. right? That's that, that's that final phase. So take a minute. You can probably do it in your head right now if you haven't been doing it the whole time we're talking. Yep. Pick the phase that you're really good at. Spend the first six months working on that. Pick the phase that you suck at. Take the next six months and work on that. Yep, I like it. Um, well, guys, I love chess, um, the game, and the band. I don't <laughs> know if I love the band. <laughs> I don't even know what they say. What does chess sing? I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. Well, anyway, there's a band like from the 70s or something called chess. Is there? Yeah, there is. I, I, we're going to look at it from whenever we get done. And then I'm on, I'm on next podcast, we're going to talk about it. All right. <laughs> gotcha. Um, but, guys, we, we play chess. And and we do this podcast, um, especially Matt, for one reason, one reason alone, right? Because you beat me all the time. <laughs> Why is that, Matt? Because we want to be part of their win. That's right. 